Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Actually, our Father in the Lord had instructed me to introduce one of the testifiers, Elder Balajema, who testified here. In one of the messages, the Lord granted me grace to share. I made reference to her that a woman in my denominational church, that was long before she got to know about Hori Moore, testified to me that the Lord revealed to her the filthiness associated with jewelries. And since then, she threw them away. That is the woman that came with the husband to testify before us today. Glory be to God. Let us rise up and worship the Lord. Their throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness, righteousness, and hated wickedness. Hallelujah, therefore go, the God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above the fellow, therefore go. God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above the Lord. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to know more about him. Pray and commit yourself to the Lord and ask that let the Lord speak to you in a clear and still language. Let the Lord give you understanding of his word, the gospel of truth. Let the Lord visit you. Let the Lord anoint you with the oil of gladness that your head shall lack no oil at the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is by the corner. Father Lord, we worship you. We exalt your mighty name. We bless your holy name. We are requesting the eternal God for understanding of this truth. We are requesting, O oh Lord, reveal yourself to us in the mightier dimension. Open our eyes to know more and more about you. Father Lord, we thank you for the privilege you have granted us to come before you. We thank you, Lord, for your everlasting love for man. You created man in your image. And you created man to be with you. And the devil got across to man. Father, we are praying. May you, O oh God, by reason of this message, cause many to understand what the devil has done unto their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We, sh- we can be seated. Praise the Lord. We, I am speaking this morning about restitution. Unknown but necessary requirement for heaven. Restitution is unknown, but it is a necessary requirement for heaven. 
Many people in most churches of the world have not come across this concept or this doctrine. Including myself, before I came, the Lord brought me to Holiness Revival Movement. I never knew anything about restitution. I never heard of it. Talk more of doing it. But yet, it is a necessary requirement for heaven. You need to do it so as to purify yourself for preparation to enter heaven. The Lord loves his church, the church that he died for. The Lord loves the church. And so, if you want to enter heaven, there are a requirement, but it's not just calling the name of the Lord that qualifies you to enter heaven. The Bible says, so not all that say, Lord, Lord, will enter my kingdom. There are provisions the Lord has made for you to understand this truth and escape the damnation that is coming upon the world. What is restitution, by the way? The art of perfecting your conscience. That your conscience will be clear. That peace will be in your heart. No sinner that commits sin and doesn't know that he has committed sin. No sinner. Many, although are in sin, but are unaware. But most sins that people commit, they know there is a sin. I have a brother, an associate, who said to me that, you know, I am a reluctant sinner. That he is aware that he is sinning. He is reluctant to commit sin. But yet he goes ahead to commit sin. I was sharing with him, I say, why can't you put away one of your wives? Because he had two wives. He said, no, you know I'm a reluctant sinner. So what is restitution? Restitution is correcting the wrong that has been done. Restitution is apologizing to people you have offended. Restitution is returning stolen property you have taken. Restitution is correcting the lies concerning yourself. The lies you have told. The lies you have told to many people. The wrong impression people have about your reputation. There are many people you ascribe certain reputation to them, but they are not because they have misled you to believe in so. So if the Lord has shown you mercy and has brought you to him, you will need to correct this wrong so as to make your way perfect with the Lord. We are going to examine restitution on the strength of the scripture because it is a biblical truth. Restitution exists even in the secular society. Even the unbelievers do restitution for the peace of their heart. But for the sake of our study this morning and our subject, we will restrict ourselves to Bible provisions that teaches restitution. It has been there in the Old Testament. It is there in the New Testament. Jesus taught it. And we are going to see by this scriptural examination. Praise the Lord. The one that the secular society practices much later in this message, we will get to know about them and see why they do them. Praise the Lord. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says, that which had been is now, and that which is to be had already been, and God required that which is past. Hallelujah. The Lord required that which is past for the perfection of your righteousness and holiness. Praise the Lord. So, restitution is a commandment. It is a commandment from the Lord. And if you want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, you must obey his commandment. Praise the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. 
as it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, if only you will obey. Because the Lord requires you to examine the past. Praise the Lord. The Lord is interested in knowing your past, that you will share it. But this is not popular outside there. This is not popular outside there. When the Lord brought me to this ministry in 2012, and I discovered that restitution is a necessary requirement for heaven. I said, oh, so I was not even a Christian. I was not even a Christian. I had to begin to examine myself from the beginning. Right from when I grew up to understand what is good and what is bad. And I knew that I had to visit all these things. Because one lived a life of sin for long. Grew up in that. I now understood that there were many restitutions that I had to do. Praise the Lord. Now, when I went through my life, I discovered that many restitutions had to be done. And not all you will remember. I started praying when I started doing my restitution. God, reveal those, of, those things that I have forgotten. That I may not fall short of your glory. Continually I keep telling the Lord. Continually I keep praying about it. As I do this restitution, I continue to ask the Lord to, ex to reveal those that I had forgotten in my life. Praise the Lord. So, it is a concept, a teaching, a doctrine that had been there from the beginning in the New Testament and in the, in the Old Testament altogether. So, to make yourself perfect, you must apologize to people that you had offended. You had caused pains in their heart. You had deceived many. You had even borrowed and refused to pray. So, Examine yourselves vis-a-vis -vis these lines of Christianity and restore yourself. Praise the Lord. So, those that you have offended and seek for forgiveness. So, these among others include, and there are varied areas that will be explained later as in restoring that which had been stolen to rightful honors. Confessing lies that had been told to many people. Paying back debt on. Relinquishing false claims. Maybe on certificate. False claims on result. False claims on property. Etc. Etc. Uncovering hidden crimes committed against the society. There are many people that have committed valid crimes against the society. And when they receive salvation, they don't visit it. It is very necessary. Because who will believe you that you are born again? Who will believe you that the Lord has saved you? You must demonstrate faithfulness to this gospel. Amen. So, this are areas that we are going to examine. The scriptural areas of restitution are the ones we will examine now. Praise the Lord. So like I said, both the Old Testament and the New Testament preach, taught restitution and practice it. The Christians of all practice it. The New Testament believers practice it. This is to say, it is in the mind of God that we do restitution. Praise the Lord. In Leviticus chapter 6, in Leviticus chapter 6, the Bible tells us in verse 1 to 7, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, 
or in the thing taken away by violence, or had deceived his neighbor, or had found that which was lost, and lied concerning it, and sweared falsely, in any of these that a man doeth, sinning therein, then it shall be, because he had sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently, or the thing which he had deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found, or all that about which he had sworn falsely. He shall even restore it in the principal, and shall add the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto whom it appertained to, in that day of his trespass offering. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With their estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he had done in trespassing therein. That is in the Old Testament as it was. Now, there are innovations as the Lord Jesus came and gave us understanding of restitution. Not necessarily that you may pay out on the fifth part, as it is said, but in the new dispensation, you are expected to pay the principal. Praise the Lord. You are expected to pay the principal. In Judges chapter 14, praise the Lord. It is a necessary concept because it is not being known and people need to know about it. As you come here, the Lord has brought you here, you are expected to be his ambassador and take these messages all over and tell your brothers that are not aware of this, that they may do this and be perfected before the Lord. In Judges chapter 17, verse 1 to 4, this is restitution on the stolen property. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursed, and speakest of also in my ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. Praise the Lord. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother. And his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image of Micah. This is practical restitution as it was in the days of old, as it was in the beginning. Praise the Lord. Now, we are going to look at this restitution in varied forms. This is restitution concerning stolen properties. Restitution concerning stolen properties. Praise the Lord. The things that you took falsely by false claim, the things that you took secretly, nobody knew you, but the Lord was watching you. And the person you took that from is not aware. Yet, it is haunting your conscience. Your conscience is not clear. Because you know that there is something wrong with you. Anytime you see that person, you remember. Praise the Lord. In the story of Zacchaeus, in the New Testament, in the book of Luke, chapter 19, Zacchaeus was a known revenue collector. That is the status in our contemporary days. Those who work in revenue department of government, accountant, financial expert, and those who collect revenues are familiar with this department. And it is 
a very attractive department for people who want to steal money. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Praise the Lord. In Act, in Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10, we read, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at the house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with that man that is a sinner. Amen? All sinners are known. Sometimes you don't know that they know you as a sinner. And that is why restitution is very important. You have to prove to the people that you have changed. Zacchaeus, we know you to be a tax collector. We know you to show change people. You take money from people. You take bribe. You receive bribe. You collect tax. Today, the Lord Jesus is going to be with this man. No, he's a sinner. He is a sinner. Why should Jesus go and be with a sinner? That was the grudges of the people against Zacchaeus. Because they know him. Sin has a way of announcing you. Whether you like it or not. Sin will announce you. Remember the message? Resist sin, family. Sin has a way of announcing you. Whether you know it or you don't. In fact, in most cases, you may, not, you may think you are sinning and you are covered. It's not true. You are dealing with humans. Nobody can keep secret. Nobody. The secret you share with your wife, the secret you share with your friend, he goes to share with another person. If you commit immorality with a woman, you think you are hiding. She has a friend. She will share it with her. So don't deceive yourself. You will not be hidden. So do your restitution that the Lord will make you pure and you will not stand any accusation. The devil will not accuse you again. The devil will not accuse you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Zacchaeus knew himself, he knew of this murmuring. Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to understand that this statement from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came because of the confession he had from Zacchaeus. Jesus was happy with Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus said he is willing to return every stolen property that he had had. Jesus was happy because he had pleased God. He had pleased Jesus. So you can see restitution is very very important in the life of every Christian. For the Son of Man is come to seek to save that which was lost. This was in an answer to those who were murmuring that Jesus was going to visit the sinner. Jesus came for the sinners. If there is no sin in the world, there will have been no need for Jesus to come. And here is a sinner who has agreed that, yes, I am a sinner. I am willing to give out anything that I had stolen, anything that I had acquired falsely, I am willing to give it out. And so we can see why restitution is very fundamental. It is a necessary requirement for heaven. Our Lord Jesus loved it. He expressed, he expressed, he was pleased by what Zacchaeus said. So anytime you offer to cleanse yourself, anytime you offer to confess the bad things you had done 
to your pastor or to the person that you are offended, be rest assured that heaven is backing you. Amen? Heaven is standing with you. The angels are happy with you. God is happy with you. Praise the Lord. Contrary to how it's been downplayed by most churches worldwide, restitution is still a necessary requirement for heaven as the earth lived. Restitution is a necessary requirement. What may differ, what may not be considered today, like I said earlier, are the specifications of the law on how it should be carried out. That is, whether or not one should pay for fall or add a fifth part, 20% there to, etc., etc. These have passed with the law. The present dispensation requires it to be carried satisfactorily and in principle. Praise the Lord. I say I thank the new dispensation. Because I'm just wondering how I would have been able to carry out my own restitution if these things were to be returned in fourfold. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even then, even returning the principal, if you don't have, you must sell everything. That is, if where you stole that money, the person refuses to forgive you. As a politician and a public servant who had held position by the grace of God in the 5th National Assembly I chaired the House Committee on Police Affairs overseeing activities of police formation across the country oversighting the police in the process many things went wrong many things those of you who remember the, the famous IG of police Tafa Balogun I served as chairman police committee that time. And I knew what went wrong. The bribe we took, or the budget padding, you know, you put money in the budget and you arrange, they come and give you so, so, so money out of it, and all sort of things. I sat down, I calculated this. I said, if I'm going to return this, even the principal, do I have it? And you know, politicians, once you get this money, it is easy going. I now knew that I was in trouble. The Lord showed me mercy. The Lord showed me mercy. If you want to do restitution, two things you must avoid. Pride and fear. What has stopped many ministers what has stopped many Christians, many believers from doing restitution is pride. I'm telling you, it's pride. Me like this, you are so important. You cannot go and say, I did this, or I stole this, I did this. You are so important, you can't do it. This is the major reason why many Christians don't want to do restitution. The mercy the Lord showed me came as a result of the IG that was in position then when I became converted. I went to him and I said to him, he was actually a principal staff officer to the IG during when I was serving as chairman of police affairs. I said to him that you know all that we did. He said, what did you do, my chairman? I said, no, I am talking about the wrong things I was doing, the bribe I was collecting with you people. Some of these things, no, because the IG used to send him to me with some of this information. I said, you know, these things are wrong. The Lord has shown me mercy and opened my eyes to understand the doctrine of restitution. And that is why I'm here. Because if I calculated some of this money, the quantum is such and the amount that you look at it now, I don't have it. And I've come to seek for forgiveness. Amen? I've come. He sat back. He thought I was joking and he started laughing. He said, ah, but the chairman, you help your people. I said, no. That is not how I should help my people. 
That is not how I should help my people because my soul is endangered now. If the trumpet sounds, I cannot make heaven. I cannot make the rapture. Of course, his little knowledge of the Bible, he said, well, if that is what you mean, I have forgiven you. Praise the Lord. Give a clap offering to Jesus. Because I told him, I told him that I am coming to you in humility, in submission to the power of the Lord that you exercise. Today, if you refuse to forgive me, you can handcuff me. That the property of the police is with me. The money of the police is with me. So when he pronounced that forgiveness, the peace that came upon me is only heaven knows. Only heaven knows. Praise the Lord. So, restitution is a necessary requirement for heaven. Make no mistake about it. The Bible teaches it. The Christians are supposed to practice it. If you do not do it, remember you still have many things to settle with the Lord. Many things because it perfects you. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, where we need to know more about restitution, Paul wrote concerning Onesimus in the book of Philemon. Hallelujah. Paul wrote concerning Onesimus that he met in prison. Apparently Onesimus was a servant under Philemon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So in Paul's sojourn in prison, he met with Onesimus, shared the gospel with him, and Onesimus received Christ, became converted in the hand of Paul in prison, and Paul blessed him. So while Onesimus were living, Paul wrote a letter to Philemon concerning his son Onesimus. Forgive him. He is a new creature. He is a new creature. Anything that you own. The Bible does not give us details about the extent of crime committed by Onesimus before, while he was under Philemon. But we knew that something went wrong before he was put away and even on to prison. Paul said, because Paul was writing the strength of information Onesimus provided to him. Paul said, if he takes anything from you, charge it to my account. I am willing to pay. Praise the Lord. So in Philemon verse 8, Paul's plea for Onesimus. Wherefore, thou I may be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient. Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the age, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bones, which in time past was to thee unprofitable but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is my own boys, whom I will have returned with me, that in their stead he may have ministered unto me in the bones of the gospel. But without my mind will I do nothing, that their benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved. Especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he had wronged thee or owed thee ought, put that on my account. Amen? I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit I do not say to thee, how thou owest unto me, even thy own self besides. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul was appealing to, to Philemon. Forgive him. That which he owe you or he took from you, put it in my account. I am going to pray. If restitution were not necessary, would Paul would have been making emphasis on repaying that which Onesimus took from Philemon? It is a necessary requirement. Don't, don't let anybody deceive you. Do it. It is good for you. It is good for your soul. It restores peace unto you. Praise the Lord. So, Onesimus is now born again. Onesimus is not like the servant that was under Philemon and was maybe pilfering money from his pocket. Oh, he was giving clothes to wash. He saw money. He took it away. Sometimes you can test your servant. You can say, okay, let me see whether this my servant is a thief. And you put money in your pocket. And you say, let him go and wash. He goes and he removes the money and keep it. He doesn't report back to you there. You know he is. Hallelujah. So Onesimus now is returning to his servant, not as just a servant, but as a brother. Because no matter how highly placed you are, once a brother that is called, born again, he is your brother. There is no status between you. Amen? You are all one before God. Praise the Lord. Now, restitution for wrong marriage. I said there are areas of restitution. Restitution for wrong marriage. In Genesis chapter 20, the story of Abraham is quite a very familiar story to most of us seated here. And as we are going to read, we will understand that it is a doctrine that had been there right from the foundation of the wall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Abraham's journey with his wife, Sarah, something happened between Sarah and Abimelech. Hallelujah. Something happened. Genesis chapter 20, verse 1. Hallelujah. Restitution on marriage. Wrong marriage. And Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shu and sojourned in Gera. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gera, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? You can see, even Abimelech, who was a righteous man by scriptural account, said he not unto me, she is my sister? And she, even she herself said, he is my brother, in the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, have I done this? And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou dearest this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore, so far I did not to touch her. Now therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, no doubt that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore, Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears, and the men were so afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done this unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What so is thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is their kindness, 
which thou shalt show unto me at every place whither we shall come. Say of me, he is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep, oxen, men servant, women servant, and gave them unto Abraham, and restored him Sarah, his wife. And Abraham, amen? And Abimelech, behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleases. Verse 16, and unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of thy eyes unto all that are with thee. And with all, those she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech, and his wife, and his men servant, and the bare children. God brought reproach upon the land of Gerah. Barrenness because of adultery. Any woman that you have brought onto your house as a wife, that is your second wife, you are wrongly married. Don't fear. These are things that you take to God in prayer. It's not a thing of pride. If you know how hell is, our mom and Linda shared how the torment of hell is. I am telling you it's better to humble yourself. Pray to God and let God give you wisdom how this matter will be solved. For with God, all things are possible. I will tell you a story of one of my uncles when we were growing up in the village. Is somebody in those days we used to look up to, how oh, I wish I'd, be, I'd become like this man. Some, as event went on in life, he had issues with his marriage. The wife left. He too left, went and married another woman. They separated for 27 years. 27 years. The other one went and married a woman. Had children. They are grown up. So when the Lord brought me to this movement and I learned about it, that was a process. I was doing my own restitution. I went to the village. As usual, he came to greet me and I took him on on this matter of his marriage. He said, my brother, if I am not refusing what you are saying, now what do I do with the wife that is at home? See, we have born children. They are grown up now. What do I do? I said to him, these children are your children. They are your blood. The Bible requires you show them love, bring them up in his way. But pray that God will bring a way that you will perfect your marriage. He said he was going to pray about it. Now, the first wife that he had married and they separated was the one that first came to the knowledge of this truth. She's actually a member of Horimo. I spoke with her yesterday. She couldn't come because she has some health challenge. And she was the one that came and met me. I said, now you are now born again. You say, Christ has shown you mercy. And you are without your husband. How do you do? Because you were the one that first left that house. She said, Uncle, I'm waiting to go back. But my problem is, will my husband accept me? I told her, don't worry. It was at that point that I looked for the husband. So when I discovered that the husband too was interested, but his worry was the wife at home, I said, let us take you to the Lord in prayer. So we all left on that note. I came, I shared with the international director, and we have been praying for him. The Lord visited him and showed him mercy. Hallelujah. On my second visit to the village, early in the morning, they said he was waiting for me downstairs. I said, ah. And I came down and met him. He said, do you know one thing? I said, no. He said, you know, I told you about my wife. The one that is at home. Of course, he calls her his wife. Last week, early in the morning, around 5 a.m., I had to come home now because they told me that you are around. I have come to share with you. He was telling me. Around 5 a.m. in the morning, my wife woke me up. So I woke up. She now told me that I have discovered that you are not my husband. Hallelujah. Give a clap offering to Jesus. 
The Lord God is merciful. I have discovered that you are not my husband. I will want you to go and look for your wife where she is still alive. I will go and look for a new husband. This is wonderful. This is unbelievable. I sat there quietly. I was listening to him. And I said to him, remember I told you that with God, all things are possible. It's a necessary requirement for heaven. That is how the wife left. It is now good news for the first wife. They had to be reconciled together. They came to this camp to celebrate Jesus for the mercy he has shown them. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Lord did something. After this reconciliation, not quite two years, the man died. So, God is a merciful God. His mercy endured forever. Don't allow anybody to deceive you that there is any provision in the Bible to divorce your wife. It is heresy. It is a wrong teaching. It is done by false prophet. It is not there. The Old Testament speaks against the voice. It is very clear. It is not hidden. Both the New and the Old Testament speak against this attitude of putting away. The Bible in Malachi chapter 2 Hallelujah. In Malachi chapter 2 verse 16, the Bible says, For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away for one covered violence with his garment. See the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye do not treacherously. It's a treachery. It's a backstabbing. It's betrayal. The wife of your youth to put her away and marry another wife. For what reason? The Bible says he hates it. Praise the Lord. So many scriptures, both in the New Testament, the Bible speaks clearly against divorce. In one of the denominational churches, wherein I saw a divorcee, a woman that has separated from her husband, was reconciled to another man. My heart bled. I was so done by a minister who is supposed to be called by God to preach this gospel of truth. Praise the Lord. It is unbelievable. In Matthew chapter 19, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 3, Praise the Lord. Verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female at the beginning? And said, For this cause shall a man have lived father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the twine shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twine, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wife. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. And whoso married her which is put away, doth commit adultery. These false teachers that are all over the place in the churches misinterpret what fornication means here. This is a premarriage relationship. Praise the Lord. 
This is a pre-marriage relationship. As Joseph was contemplating to put away Mary, the Lord appeared to him that it is not fornication. The lady you have betrothed to marry that is in, no. It is the Holy Spirit that is in her. So there are traditions, the Jewish tradition, if you have a fiancé that you are dating, you are going to marry. If you see her, in fact, that relationship to that extent is almost as if she's yours, but you've not perfected the marriage process. Amen? You are together, and in that wise, if she goes to sleep with another person, of course it's fornication. The tradition allows you to leave her. That was the contemplation that was almost coming upon Joseph. Praise the Lord. So, it is not that you marry a wife and consent, parental consent sought, you have agreed, the woman has come to you, you've paid bride price, she's in your house, and then you say she's in adultery. Or, whatever reason, you say you no longer like her. That is not allowed. It is a desecration of the scripture. You have disobeyed the commandment of God and the Lord will not be happy with you because he is not pleased with that which you have done. Now restitution for false accusation. Restitution for false accusation. In Psalms chapter 12. In Psalms Chapter 12. The Bible says, in verse 2, they speak vanity everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said with our tongue, will we prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord of us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighting of the needy, now will I arise, see the Lord, I will set him in the safety from him that puffed at him. The ways of the Lord are pure ways, a silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Praise the Lord. So, the lies that you use, you use your lips to bring somebody down. You accuse him falsely. You know that these things you are saying are lies. And yet, you concoct it, especially in the world of technology now, where we have social media, we have Facebook, we have whatever, Twitter, we have all sort of accounts, Messenger or whatever they are called. I am not in the social media. I think the best I have gone is the WhatsApp messages where I can receive some edifying messages. Many people... The devil is using them to use this platform to speak evil and lies, false accusation against many people. I am not on Facebook, but there are accounts open in my name. And many people have been deceived. Uh, I want to give you this, so you are going to pay in this money so that we process this and contract paper. Many people are ignorantly paying money. These are done by people. And of course, there are Christians there. So, such a one, if the Lord shows you mercy and has given you salvation, has recovered you, you have converted, is it not in your interest to confess all these false accusations and deceitfulness you were doing? It's very necessary for your purification. Praise the Lord. It's very necessary. So, take heed and understand that it is necessary. False accusation. Now, what are the reasons for restitution? Praise the Lord. It is a commandment that the Lord has given. Praise the Lord. Restitution is a commandment. Hallelujah. It is a commandment of the Lord that we must obey. And we read wherein, if you don't obey this commandment, you are not going to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you obey this commandment, you will enjoy the blessings of God. 
Now, the, the price and reward of disobedience. What is the price and reward of disobedience? Because the Lord can lose his patience upon you. God is a patient God. But if he runs out of patience, remember the Lord also is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. God is a merciful God and at the same time a consuming fire. So if you disobey the commandment of God, if you disobey the commandment of God, be prepared. If you don't repent, be prepared you will suffer judgment either here or even in the world hereafter. Praise the Lord. That restitution is a commandment is in Job chapter 42. Praise the Lord. Job chapter 42, verse 7 to 9. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against their two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job had. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job. Offer up for yourselves a bond offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For he, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. Praise the Lord. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuanite, the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamatite went, and did according as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted Job. Praise the Lord. Restitution is a commandment. The Lord commanded Abimelech, king of Zerah, to go see Abraham. And return Sarah that Abraham will pray for him and he will be recovered. Hallelujah. So, restitution is a commandment of God. Praise the Lord. Nothing can be hidden before God. It is necessary for you to do it because all that you did, God is aware. Nothing can be hidden from God. If you restitute, you are able to perfect your record before heaven. Praise the Lord. Nothing can be hidden before God. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Anything you do, God is aware. If you lie, your name is removed from the book of life. No lie is small. Be reminded. Hello, how are you, my brother? I say you're on the phone, you're talking to somebody. Where are you? You are in Kuali and you are telling him that you are in Jalingo. That is a lie. It is recorded against you. You must call him and tell him that day we were talking, I was telling you a lie or I was deceiving you. I was in Kuali that day, I was not in Jalingo. That is restitution for lies. You have spoken lies, you have misled somebody. And heaven will record it against you. Praise the Lord. Restitution is required for personal peace. Amen? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, restitution is required for your personal peace. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men. As much as lie it in your powers, do it. It is for your peace. With you, with men, and with God. Follow peace with all men. It's very necessary. I told us that when the police IG told me that in that case, I have forgiven you. He was saying it on behalf of police. The peace that descended upon me only God knows. This is among many areas I have carried out restitution. With a local government chairman where I was working with a federal institution in the mid-80s, in 1987. 
I had to go to him in humility. Incidentally, the chairman happened to be somebody who was working very closely with me, was my political associate. He was surprised. Ah, why do I bother? I said, no. But these are properties of the local government that I took. They were not mine. I have, he said, no, I will pay for it. I said, no, I have the money to pay for them. So when I paid, that area covered. Peace returned to me. It gives you peace. It is required for personal peace. Praise the Lord. Reasons for restitution, a necessary requirement for heaven. It adores the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 5, restitution adores the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let's start from verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It adorns the gospel of Jesus Christ. What about those people that know you as a, as, as a corrupt man? You had maybe defrauded somebody. You are taking bribe from somebody and you say you are born again. How will they believe you? Because your life should be a testimony to people who are seeing you. Your life is it's not the kind of English you speak on pulpit, no. It is your personal life. People can give testimony about you. People will, I told us earlier that sin has a way of announcing you. What you say in the pulpit is different from what you are doing. So people know you with two personalities. People know you with two personalities. Even your children, they know. That's as our father and the Lord was telling us that when the man started doing the first miracles they do, the children say, Daddy has committed fornication today. They know. Because these things cannot be hidden. So it is a concept. It is a doctrine. It adores the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You become an example to believers and non-believers alike. People will share. Oh, if it is this man, no, forget. Oh, he will not. If it is this man, no, count. He will not do. There are certain things that I know that some people who know your life, they will not bring it to you. They will not bring it to you because they know that it will not fly. Praise the Lord. They know that it will not fly. So, to that extent, you have become an example to many people, to believers and unbelievers alike. In one of my testimony, which is in the YouTube, I said, I happen to know the international director of this ministry from childhood. His personal life attracted, contributed to how the Lord fast tracked my coming to Holiness Revival Movement. I have met with different pastors. I have met. So, his personal life stood out clear. And when I met with him, I see that he was still maintaining the status quo. Praise the Lord. So, your life will be a testimony to believers and unbelievers alike. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, Let no man despise their youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Let your life be an example to believers. Praise the Lord. Remember, restitution put Satan to shame. It put Satan to shame and enables you to attain holiness. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, Satan is put to shame and you attain a level of perfection. Praise the Lord. 
2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. This should be a lesson to people who are teaching another gospel. I am called to teach prosperity. I am called to teach only healing. It's an incomplete ministry. You teach people how to heal. What about their soul when they die and go to heaven? How do they do when they die and go to heaven? You are not emphasizing the zero tolerance for sin. Paul said, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth those that are his. Let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Have a zero tolerance for sin. Do everything in your power to renounce sin. Restitution cleanses you, perfects you, purifies you, and you are very peaceful. So who said that it's not possible to attain perfection? Are you saying the Bible is lying? In spite of all the scriptures concerning perfection, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Be ye holy as I am holy, as your Father who is in heaven is holy. And these things are not being taught in these churches. Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you teaching incomplete inc doctrine? Teach all things concerning the Bible. Teaching them all things. In Matthew 28, 20. Don't leave anyone outside. Put all together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, one advantage of restitution, it prevents you from committing further sin. Because the thought is in your mind that if I commit this, I have to come and confess it openly. For how many times will you be coming to be confessing sin? God, show me mercy. Tomorrow you go and come back. Are you not ashamed of yourself? So the advantage of restitution is that it helps you to stop committing sin. Praise the Lord. It helps you to stop committing sin. It is required for personal peace, not only with God, but with men, to clear your conscience. I told us that restitution is necessary even in the secular society because they do it they do it for ease of administration of the criminal justice system. You know, the law as it was, and let me take us to Elizabethan England, how the law was formed to govern society. There were collections of moral codes that they brought together through the nobles, the reign of nobility in Elizabethan England. They collect these moral codes, bring them together, and they become law to govern society. And that is why you see, in the innocency of my heart, I commit this, but the Lord says you are not guilty. You are, you are still guilty. You are still guilty. These are collections from the scripture. They are not excuse for you to just go scot free. So if you know them, if you don't know them, it doesn't set you free. That is why God said, I appear to you in dream that you go and correct this. So the same thing with the secular society. For those who are familiar with our law, we know that ignorance of the law is not an, it's not an excuse. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse. This is one aspect that should put fear in you. And when you hear the word of God, take it very seriously. Restitution is, it gives you peace. Because the concept of plea bargain, which in some climes is enshrined in their law is meant to recover stolen properties of government. The, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in Nigeria also practices it. I remember the chairman when he was with us in the parliament, he was naming how many properties were recovered from a woman that ran into millions of dollars, including jewelries. You know, you can see how restitution is important. 
Even the devil knows that restitution is very important and he won't want you to do it. Because he will not have anything to accuse you again. They won't believe I do it. The last time I shared about an American spy who is well known, Bill Oakley, who killed the popular reggae star, Robert Nestor Malley. In his dying bed, he confessed that he was the one that killed Bob Malley. And that he was assigned. The CIA's interest in the world is where the American interest is touched. So the CIA went after Bob Marley in some of his songs where he was attacking the American interests. You know some of the songs, for those of you who had been there before, the other side of the aisle. Amen? Praise the Lord. So the CIA assigned Bill Oakley with a gift to take it to Bob Marley. Bob Marley used to like sport a lot because they would walk on you and know what you want. He loves sport a lot, so he disguised himself as one of his fans and took this canvas to him and inserted there a pin that would cause him cancer. So when Bob Marley used this, the pin, the pin punched him and he became infested with cancer. It's very possible. Bill Ogley, but his conscience has never been clear. That is one thing with sin. So while he was about to die, he called people and told them, I was the one that killed Bob Marley. That is restitution. Because his conscience was not clear. He needed to perfect it. So restitution is good for both the secular society and the church. In fact, it's better for the church because it is a requirement for heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So don't say you do not know. The Lord brought you here to open your eyes to understand these things. The Lord brought you here that you may learn these things and become his ambassadors. You are not brought here for nothing. It's not a coincidence. It is the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God that the Lord brought you here to learn about his word and go and teach others also. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he said, The things you have heard of me and learned among many witnesses. Share to other faithful men also, that they may teach others also. The Lord brought you here that you may learn these things and also teach others. Some of us that the Lord has shown mercy. We never knew about this. We had never, I had never, I had never, and I repeat in my life, that one day I will stand to witness for Jesus Christ. This is a mercy I consider uncommon. It is the mercy of God. So, are you aware that the patience of God with you can end if the Lord waits you to repent and you refuse to change? Remember that the way to heaven is a narrow way. It is not a broad way. These things that many people are in love with, are you telling your congregation that run away from them? Brood is the way, and many are they that follow. They are telling you about things that you should throw away. You are saying, no, in our church, we don't do that. Which your church? Is it Christ's church or your church? This is what the Bible is saying. Return to the Bible. Return to the Bible and preach the Bible. Run away from men's tradition. The Bible is telling you that tell this to my children and you are withholding back the truth. So much that confusion has come upon the church. In fact, if you preach about J. West, I was with, I was with somebody who was uh, in a Bible study. I now read out the scripture in Genesis 35 where the, the Lord spoke about jewelry and asked Jacob. Jacob was to go to the Lord in Bethel. And he said, put away the strange gods. I asked him, I have never heard people preach about this. Incidentally, himself, he is ignorant. In the Bible study, what do you say about this? He looked at the scripture, he said, okay, I think I'm seeing this for the first time. It's okay, I'm going to get back to you. Up to this time, I'm talking to you, he has not gotten back to me. 
So this, the Bible, they don't study this Bible. And where they read, sometimes they turn the meaning upside down. The other one told me that, you know, this is the strange God that uh, uh, Rachel or Rebecca brought from her father. And all. He was just struggling with words. This is the wrong teachings, the heresies, the apostasies that has taken over the church. The church is so filthy. People don't want to own up to this. I felt like disappearing in a church where a minister was using Ezekiel chapter 16 to justify the use of jewelries. And the fear about this is that such people, if the Lord gets to convert them, they come to know the truth, they will come and be preaching the truth, and those that they had deceived are already gone to hell. Those that they have deceived have already gone to hell. But he comes to enjoy the mercy of God later, and his eyes will open, and he will understand that. So these things I was saying were wrong. I didn't know. I didn't know. I can't help to mention the humility of one of our elders who mentioned that I have come to learn the word of God. This is the kind of humility that the Bible requires of us. Apollos displayed it in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, verse 24. Apollo bowed down to learn from Priscilla and Aquila. The knowledge of the Bible is limitless. Don't deceive yourself. Don't allow pride to carry you away. You sit under a pastor that doesn't read the Bible. He is not called by God. He is in the ministry because of employment. He is not called by God. And you are under his voice and he maintains that stiff position that no, this is not the truth. How will you do if the Lord recovers him? You so much believe in him. So that, no, it's not true. Because you are in love with that thing, you are finding it difficult to remove those properties of Jezebel. You are finding it difficult to remove it. You argue. One of my sisters that we spoke shared these uh, messages about jewelries when the Lord brought me here. And she said, my husband insisted I have to be wearing them. Kai. Can you see the extent of disobedience, the level of submission to husband against the scripture? Submission to husbands are to scriptural standards. You are one flesh. You are not one soul. You are different souls. You have seen the truth and instead of you to stand by it, you are refusing. May the Lord Recover the church in Jesus' name. May the Lord open our eyes to know more and more in Jesus' name. Let us rise up on our feet and pray. Ask the Lord to recover you. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time I need a old time religion is good. Eh? Father, give me the old time. I need a old, old. Give me the old time religion is good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul. It was good for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. It was good for all the apostles. All the apostles. It was good for all the apostles. It's good enough for me. Open your mouth and tell the Lord to reveal this to. Let the Lord recover you. Let the Lord show you mercy. You are here now. There are pending restitution against you that you have not confessed them. 
There are sins in your life that you had committed in the past. You had borrowed and you had not paid. You had committed adultery with somebody and your wife is not aware. They visit you. Your wife is in darkness. She doesn't know much about your darkness, your dark past. You are here. The Lord is speaking to you. Can you take a step of faith? Can you take a step of faith and come forward that the servant of God will pray for you? The servant of God will pray for you that the Lord will give you the grace to do your restitution. Just take a step of faith and come forward. If you have outstanding restitution against you, put the devil to shame. Don't be proud. Come forward, the servant of the Lord will pray for you. The grace of God will be available to you and the courage to do your restitution. The Lord will show you mercy. The Lord will forgive you. The Lord will cleanse you. The Lord will perfect your righteousness and holiness. Brethren, don't joke with your soul. It may be the last time you are listening to this. It may be the last time you are listening to this. You may not have another opportunity again. Nobody has the control of his life. Nobody has the control of his life. Take a step of faith, come forward, that the Lord will show you mercy. The grace of God will be sufficient upon your life, that you will have the boldness, you will overcome pride to do your restitution. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We exalt your mighty name. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Thank you, Jesus. Ask for the grace of God upon your life. Let the Lord show you mercy. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Confess those things. Some had come across charms. You have charms that you can throw around. Some of the restitution are too delicate that you can handle alone. The Lord has provided ministers in this movement to guide you. Seek attention of leadership of holiness, revival movement worldwide. The Lord will bring you unto him in perfect stead. Ask the Lord to cleanse you. Confess all those things that you did. Some filthy transactions that you had done. Let the Lord show you mercy. Confess them and tell the Lord to perfect you in Jesus' name. Throw away properties of the devil. Properties of Jezebel. There are things you cherish so much. They are like idols to you. Confess and tell the Lord you don't need them anymore. You will not return to Egypt. You will not return to your vomit. You will be perfected. The Lord will cleanse you in the mighty name of Jesus. Confess and the Lord will show you mercy. Put the devil to shame. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' victorious name, we pray. Almighty Father, we worship and appreciate you because you are in our midst. We acknowledge the wonderful things you are doing in our midst. We thank you, Father, because your word says, He that believeth and is saved shall receive salvation, and confesses his sin shall receive salvation. These ones you have brought unto yourself. You have called them from different areas of endeavor. They are standing before you, acknowledging the truth of your scripture. Father, may you forgive them in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, show them mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for more grace upon their lives. Grant them the grace, O oh Lord, to do their restitution in Jesus' name. Father, grant them the grace to live a life that will please you. For you are interested in the past. That which had gone, you want to know. You are interested in it. They are before you. Father, Lord, visit them. 
individually and collectively in Jesus' name. Father, release upon them your spirit of grace and supplication. The courage, the boldness to do this restitution in the mighty name of Jesus. Put in them the spirit of humility in Jesus' name. Grant them the grace to overcome pride. For pride goeth before fall. Thank you, Father, for showing the mercy. They have overcome the spirit of pride that they have come before you to confess of their outstanding restitution. Father, Lord, grant them the grace to do it in Jesus' name. Fill them, O oh Lord, with your spirit that they will be an example unto other believers in the mighty name of Jesus. These are your new ambassadors you are raising for the end time. It is your wisdom for the end time that you establish this movement. These ones are before you. Father, cleanse them. Prepare them. Sanctify their spirit, soul, and flesh with your word. For your word is truth. Father, Lord, sanctify them with their truth. That they will be ambassadors for you in all over the world. They will go forth, O oh Lord, to preach this gospel across the world. In Jesus' name. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. May your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my I believe in you, you are the living Savior, I believe in you, you are my Lord and Savior. Lord and 
I believe in you. Believe you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe, I believe, I believe.